This is the Cheers Podcast. Okay, we're going to discuss uh, immigration. This topic is very close to mine because my family has immigrated to this com- country. Uh, we are Irish, Irish Americans, Mexican Americans, Italians, whatever. We have a lot of stuff in our blood. My father is Irish, my mom is uh, Mexican, and I was born in Mexico City. And uh, I moved over here when I was in eight, eight months old. So my Spanish is not as uh, as fluent as yours. Or my my younger sister who was playing with the soccer crowd in Porter. So. She, every day she was talking Spanish. En la Porter. En, en la Porter Nation. <laughs> and so uh, she was able to practice. I did not. I hanged out with my friends in the swimming club and I don't know. The, no Spanish in the swimming club. No. <laughs> what there was, it's just, uh, there was two, two groups. One was the people who spoke English and Spanish, which I was in as well, but we just chose to speak English. And then you have everyone. Max. Yeah. yeah, you had yeah. other people from Matamoros and they were just talking Spanish. And so the team was a little bit two social classes at the same time, but we all were one family and we, we all had, had a good time. But my sister had a different experience, so her Spanish is more fluent. This issue for immigration is very, very close to my heart. Uh, my, uh, my history as an Irish American, when I looked into it and, uh, and finding uh, Irish Americans from the past when they came, they were seen as uh, like less than white or less than normal they were seen as scum they were coming taking our jobs and uh, they were drunk and they would build pubs and they would just uh, fight each other and they're catholic and they're catholic yeah Yeah. Uh, disgusting disgusting catholics and so my history uh, with being irish has kind of like re reignited inside me because i'm seeing the same rhetoric and same language getting used right now for other groups, right? Uh, this time being Mexicans as well, other immigrants, basically brown and black people instead of white. And we have a president right now that has said some racist comments about immigrants. But before we get into all that stuff, uh, I want to know more about your family history and were they immigrants? Yeah, I'm not going to say that, oh, my family's from Spain because, um, Working people cannot really extend their lineage like so far out, right? Um, my family comes from, my dad comes from a little town called San Pedro de las Colonias Coahuila. Um, his father was the shoemaker of the town. Um, and he was the cobbler. He was a shoemaker, and um, it was weird. My dad wanted me to be a shoemaker, and I was like, no. Like, I grew up in Browns, I was like, no, tato. you know, I'm not going to say the word. But um, long story short, my grandpa was from a little small town called Coruya, Samaripas. He was um, native and I think, I don't know, um, he looked mixed between black and Indian. Yeah, like really curly hair, um, which is not common for a person with indigenous background. My grandma was Jewish. So um, but long story short, like we came from, I'm an anchor baby, straight up. My mom had me here in the 90s. Um, She got her papers. But pretty much my dad decided to stay Mexican. He's like, I'm Mexican. I'm going to die Mexican. Mexican is who I am. We both have, me and my little brother both have dual citizenship. But my whole family migrated here um, post-1994. So before, I was actually one of the first Americans in my family. And it was only because my mom had me on this side of the border. And I think that's the story of like 70% of the people here. Unless you say, oh, I'm ninth generation Texan, right? I think even with immigration, a lot of people don't understand that either their parents or their grandparents, right? Or their grandparents' parents came here because the story of the immigrant is the story of the jodido moving somewhere to make a better way of life. Like even our kids right now are becoming immigrants, but let's call it migrants, right? Because they're migrating. Everybody's moving north. Either you move from Southmost to Morrison Road or you move from Brownsville to San Antonio, you are an immigrant, like period. 
Um, it's just a story of the working poor. Yeah, I, for me, when it comes to the immigration, I always see immig immigrants as a human right that you should move away from some harm or better yourself. So that I always feel that's a fun, fundamental human right to have as being an immigrant. You guys came from an ocean away. Oh yeah, and there's the Irish is a very depressing story. Uh, we're we're kind of like the Jewish story as well, as well as other oppressed groups. It's very dep depression talking about it, but yeah, it's, there's more Irish outside of Ireland than there is inside because Ireland was has it the famine. The like famine, the base, of, like what was the first push outside of? There's multiple different pushes, but I know the famine was the major one. But the famine was not. Um, it was not just the famine. It was an economic sanction that uh, England didn't allow trading with Ireland while the famine was going on. So oh, wow. it exacerbated the famine. Uh, if they had international trade and they weren't like embargo, they isolated them. Like they, they isolated, isolated them. Cuba. Yeah, exactly. And so they basically uh, caused a humanitarian crisis over there. And so uh, Irish are they have a, a, polar, a polarizing history when it comes to the British and their history because the British, as the the former empire. Uh, has done a lot of atrocities throughout the world, and the Irish uh, have paid a price for those atrocities. They see the current empire doing similar actions now, and they have solidarity with the Palestinians or other oppressed groups that have an occupying force on their land. So the Irish have the Irish history, Mexican history has informed me a lot when it comes to being an American because they're probably the most American people out there. They're super hardworking, and um, and they've been. Every American is not American. Very American is not American. Yeah. Like, like even, you can even, find even the American the native, dream in other countries. No, no, no. Even natives came here from the Russian um, Alaskan bridge, right? So even like like they came here, they were the first settlers. Okay, those were Native Americans. Then the pilgrims were these outcast religious factions, and they came in. Um, the Spaniards came in. The Portuguese came in. The French came in. Um, they were the first to colonize, so hence they have the wealth now, right? That's the old, old, old money. But then the Italian came here jodido. Um, the Irish came here jodido. Donald Trump's grandfather came here jodido. Like, if you look at Donald Trump's grandfather, this is a guy who started a prostitution ring in a brothel out there in Washington State. He had a hotel. He made a hotel just like a Mexican, right? Just like an Irish, we're really like, if there's something in, pues no se, pues no le sé, pues lo voy a hacer. He ended up getting patch of dearth. He made like a little fake little island and he made it into a hotel and started selling hamburgers. It was so bad sometimes that um, there was a huge cult. This is a true story. Um, that he made burgers out of like uh, dead horses. Oh, wow. Yeah. And all these men who went over there, this is like the 49er rush. Right. Mm -hmm. um, he will have a lot of men and he saw a deficit. So they need food and they need women. So he will sell women and he will sell food. And that's all Donald Trump made his money. Oh, like, wow, they brought their best. Yeah. Yeah, they brought their best. Um, the immigrant nunca se va a morir de hambre. One way or another. Um, you had the Kennedys. Prohibition. Yeah. Se selling alcohol. Yeah. Right. You had um, Los Guerra here in Matamoros, right? Like the first major underground world, not underground world, it was the first underground like um, infrastructure here was started by a lot of the families in Mexico when the prohibition was starting. Oh, you want to go back? The last war, the Civil War, was fought here. And you know why we were important? The only reason we were important because we can smuggle arms to the Confederate Army. So historically, this region has smuggled something that's always been illegal mm -hmm. to the U.S. It started with arms with the Confederacy. It started then with alcohol. Um, now it's drugs, right? But that's just because there's a demand here. You take away the demand, people are not going to be crossing drugs. Right now, you even see a drop in marijuana. Why? Because people were buying their stuff from California and Colorado. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. Um, Donald Trump's grandfather was just... Um, well, what, what about... A despicable. Uh, what, what do you think about his racist comments about immigrants, specifically like the shithole country comment? 
Yeah, here's the thing. We're always going to hate on the immigrant, not knowing that we ourselves are immigrants. It's pretty much a spitting up in the air and it falling back in our face. Haiti has been screwed. If you want to talk about Haiti and that racist comment, let's look at this. Haiti was the first republic. Black republic. Black republic here. It was one of the first real republics. What I mean by real is that all men were created equal, right? These are you never, every revolution in the world has been a marriage between the political elites and the masses. There was no political elites helping the blacks um, in Haiti. Haiti ends up becoming one of the most prosperous countries, um, so prosperous that it took in Simon Bolivar when Bolivar was trying to build La Gran Colombia. Um, and when everybody kicked them out and he had nothing, this is a guy who was a one of the wealthiest people, he lost all his land and it was only the Republic of Haiti. Right after that, France ends up suing them and stealing all their wealth and then using their country as a cash cow. The same thing they want to use here, um, all these big corporations. And if you look at Google, I want you to look at Google. I want you to move up like, I don't know, X feet in the air, right? Like if you're in the Air Force. Um, and then look at the land. The land has been so abused in Haiti that just two, three feet away on the border between La República Dominicana, you see green on the right and you see dirt that's been abused. Because here's the thing. Um, when you grow something so much in one land, yeah, like se te acabo. This is why we had, what was it called? The slash and burn. So Haiti has been raped. Haiti has been taken everything from them. Um, and when you say that people are coming from shithole countries um, like Uganda, like Kenya, like Haiti, like Mexico, he called this rapist. Um, if you actually look at the total number of crimes committed by an immigrant, it's actually lower. Mm -hmm. If you actually look at the total number of committed crimes here in Brownsville, we're safer than Denton, Texas. We're safer than Armadillo, Texas. We're safer than Plano, than Frisco. The only crime that we have here that has seen a peak is petty crime less than $50. So why do we have 1,200 state troopers and why do we have chingos or Border Patrol agents? It's just because that rhetoric is a smart rhetoric and rallying up this nativist you know what I mean? Like, like sentiment and Democrats are, 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 are twice as dumb than Republicans because when it's really hard to be an Obama, it's really hard to move people out of love, hope and change. It's a lot easier to move people out of hate and anger. And you look at the Republican rhetoric, it's all, they are stealing your jobs. They are raping your women. They are, um, nasty. If it wasn't for the immigrant, there would be no small business. The majority if, are owned if, by immigrants. If it weren't for the immigrant and these people from shithole countries, <laughs> there would be no social security check. Period. Um, if they were no immigrants, there would be no Border Patrol who are bilingual. Straight up. <laughs> like, the Border Patrol agent, if you're out there, thank you for your service. But most of the people were the ones who did not go to college. And who did not join the military. And we did a mass hiring of them. And that's why in the first phase of mass hiring, they, like right now they're spending, let me look at the numbers. They're spending $263 billion per year, right? Um, they're, the Border Patrol, and the reason we don't have consumer protection programs, the reason why the APA is not the EPA, is because Border Patrol and um, customs, right, they're both combined, spend more than the nine other agencies, federal agents, the top nine federal agencies combined per year. We already spend too much money in protecting the world, right? Like, God bless America and the red, white, and blue. I was in the Army. But most of the money that we spend in the military, we also spend in KBR, like the privatization of the military, when I'm making $46,000 a year as a sergeant in Iraq, you have this guy who's doing my same job 
but for KBR, but it's getting paid 140 and the top 90, like the first 90,000 are on tax. Mm -hmm. And yet our workers are from like shithole countries. Um, this is how screwed up America is, right? You cannot believe in equality, freedom, justice, and liberty for all. If the people that were my workers, who were Nepali, who were Indian, who were from Sri Lanka, who were from the Philippines, are getting paid two, three bucks a day, man. Like, where's your ethos? Um, the Ugandan soldier that would get killed after we started losing too many troops, you know what we did with the Ugandans? We went to their country, we got a whole bunch of black people, and we stuck them in guards. You guys do the guarding, you guys do the checkpoint, you guys do the shit that, like, literally is going to cost more deaths. Um, that's the same thing we did with the Irish. Oh, you guys are here? Oh, yeah, we're having a war, and that's a civil war. Now go fight it. Oh, yeah, we're having a war, and that war is the independence war. We literally just got the Irish from boats and send them, right, with no training, with only a pack of cigarettes and que Dios te bendiga yeah. to war. And I don't know. That's my issue with Trump. Like, Trump's dad, his dad, his grandfather, was a guy who sold women. That's not cool anywhere. Um, and the way we treat our immigrants here is the way we treat our women, the way we treat our workers, and the way we treat our environment. Well, I know that Trump is saying all these racist comments, and it's causing this, this reaction, especially with the native, his native base, his na nationalist base, the people who uh, believe in his message, his uh, make, Amer make America Great Again, again. message. So... While he's saying all this stuff, everyone goes, goes crazy. Like, I remember when the comment came out, I had to, like, wait a bit. Because everyone who's on the right wing or everyone who's a, a former Democrat, uh, who's now a Trump supporter, they were uh, debating, basically, well, yeah, it's true. They are shithole countries, right? Like, look at them. They don't have sewage. They don't have a foundation in their home. Like, they are shithole countries. But then you turn to a picture of L.A. or Seattle or some liberal... Uh, urbanized area and you find similar conditions. D Detroit. Detroit. Brownsville. Yeah, Brownsville. Look at the colonias in Laguna Heights. Yeah. Like, so, like it's too easy to call us shit, ho, when you have literally Cameron Park right here. Oh, right? yeah. And we're the Democrats. We have people in Southmost. One of the most fascinating things about knocking on doors is that I found out that a lot of the Cowboy fans are Trump fans. <laughs> and it's like, what? <laughs> I found a correlation, right? You go for the Cowboys? You are slightly more likely to be a Trump supporter. Um, Jerry Jones. That can carry on to the topic that you have there in line is when the oppressor becomes worse than the oppressed. Right? Like, I just don't get that. Oh. I, it, it's, this, I'm leaning up to that because um, in the immigration discussion, there's a thing that uh, always happens in the discussion. You have former immigrants who say, oh, I came here and I did it right. Everyone else who's doing it wrong, they have to go back and do it right. Because I did it, and I, I waited in line so long, and they cut it in line, and now they're here, and they get to get free all, all this free stuff. And in my head, I was like, think about it. There's a demand that's happening, and we're not meeting it. Thus, we create more quotas and, and restrictions for them to come in. And you're going to have people who are like, I'm not going to wait in line. I'm going to jump. Everybody who did it right is the bourgeoisie from their own country. Like, some of my eyes. Like, you have the Cubans. I'm with Chingo, and I did it right now, says my mom in way. When freaking um, Che Guevara took over and when um, Fidel Castro took over, they kicked out the Batista regime. And the Batista regime were all your bougie, oh, yeah, fancy, upper-middle-class um, owners of todo Cuba, yeah. right? So que no me chingue la gente cubana y que diga, no, 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 we did it right. Because here's the thing. They're all Republicans. Oh, yeah, in, in Florida, yeah. The Venezuela, no, like... Let's go back, right? The Venezuelans, right now. Mm -hmm. you oh, know? the ones who left, afforded it. Could afford it to leave right now while the no, crisis all, is going on. All, here's the thing. If you're a political exile, you're rich. Like, like let's, be, let's, be, let's be real. Everybody from Venezuela who got kicked out with Chavez, the first wave, was your inteligencia, was your political exile, was your middle class. Y el que se queda es el rico. Here's the thing. The rich in Mexico, the rich in Venezuela, the rich in Cuba, Nunca se van. Mm -hmm. el, el rico siempre se queda. They send their sons here. Assad. Mm -hmm. Look at Syria. Right? They come, they study, they go to Harvard, you know. They meet a hot chick, probably bring her back to their oh. native country. But the jodido, right, it's, is, is never going to leave. And the only way they, 
they move is through illegal means. But here's the thing. Um, I'm just pro-immigration because I cannot, I cannot call myself a Christian. The same way that they use Christianity in a whole different concept, which I think it's the gospel of wealth, which is dumb. I cannot tell the immigrant no if I am a Christian. Like, and this is not a romantic view of like a world without borders. These are the needy, the poor, the oppressed, the hungry, the naked, the orphan. What happened in 2015 when we had a mass exodus of kids from El Salvador? Yeah, 2014, 2015. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How can you call yourself a Christian nation, right? Which is not a Christian nation. Like, honest to God, the United States was not founded in Christianity. It was founded in something a lot more opposite to that, which was the Enlightenment era. Yeah. Which was principles, universal principles of one God. Yes, there's a creator. Right, but it was more. It was it was secular it, in a sense that it, it didn't have like a Christian deity. It, had it was nature's it was, nature. It was no. It was understanding that um, we must be a country based on reason, based on science, based on principles of equality and liberty and justice for all. A country in which we know that human nature sucks. So we have different checks and balances Then we need to be able to create an industrious people. So we create the biggest lie in our uh, constitution, which is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. No, it's actually the pursuit of property. Well, that, that like, was the original. It was property originally. No, 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 no. They just put happiness there to yeah, keep that, us with the romantic lie. Like they understood Plato. Yeah. Like, like if you read Plato's Republic, right? Yeah. You understand that the people need a lie. Like they need a little carrot. And the little carrot that they feed us, right, is the American dream. You take away the American dream out of people, the society collapses as a whole. But you cannot call yourself a Christian or, or a Republican um, when you are seeing little kids coming into this country devastated by the same policies that we implemented. In Nicaragua, in Panama, in Salvador, we, man, we treated the Salvadorians and the Guatemalan people like guinea pigs. We tested them, 69,000 of them to be exact, and we injected them with gonorrhea. Like, these are historic facts. Mm -hmm. um, we went out there with, what was his name? The guy who, with Pinochet, Kissinger? Oh, Harry and Kissinger, yeah. I can't wait until L that guy passes away. We went and destroyed Latin America. Allende, Allende was, was more of your Mujia from, your Pepe Mujia from Uruguay. This was a good guy, and we took him out. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, the history, we could, that's a separate topic. Yeah. We could definitely. But we can't talk about immigration, so. understanding that we have committed sense to these countries. Like, yeah. here's the thing. If, if I punch you in the face, and I punch your whole family in the face, and I steal all your wealth, and you guys then try to come to my house and try to acquire just one piece or another. I cannot be like, oh, no, all this. Like, we need to understand that we historically have screwed many nations over and many people over. And we have to be able to understand this. The only way you fix immigration is not with a wall. The way you fix immigration is by actually investing in their economies and making sure that they have a true representative democracy. Venezuela does not have one. Um, Cuba does not have one. And the embargo is going to do the same thing that we did with the Irish, right? Mexico does not have one. Um, Salvador does not have one. And either A, we decide to build the wall and militarize the border um, and literally say no to trade. Here's the thing. Every reaction equals an opposite and equal reaction. If we built the wall and we add, add tariffs to China, which Trump wants to do, bro, it's a tick for tack. Right. And that's going to cause the biggest economic like backlash. Um, yeah, we're going back into the protectionist yeah. time with with those inflammatory comments uh, that Trump says. Uh, what's your thoughts on the Republican controlled Congress that uses Trump's shenanigans? No, to Democrats pass too. No, 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 no. Democrats suck. Look, here's the no, thing. No, no, no. Uh, wait, yeah. hold on. Let me finish the question because mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I agree with you. Democrats also mm -hmm. suck. But uh, the main point is that right now the Republican Party is in control. And so they're the ones who are supposed to be following uh, parliamentary procedure, and they're the ones kind of uh, passing these re reactionary policies. I know the Democrats have their you own. Have, you have John McCain who hasn't. You have Lindsey Graham who hasn't. 
Like you have senators and Republican leaders like Graham, like McCain, um, like the guy Saucy from Nebraska, who say, hey, you know what? We need to protect dreamers who are not these radical Tea Party. Here's the thing. We need to differentiate between Republicans and the Tea Party. The Tea Party is a pro-Trump agenda. They're going to say whatever Trump says. But we also have this minority in the Republican Party who are still centrist. Um, and what they are doing is this. We lost in 2010. We lost in 2014 really bad. And they're using this rhetoric to control the midterm elections. Right? But also Democrats. Um, I see your question as a question of campaigning. We have a Tea Party that's going to push the Trump agenda. We have center um, right Republicans like McCain, like Graham, who are saying, no, this is crazy. We shouldn't do it. That's not us, like your old rhino. And then you have the Democrats every time saying, we got your back, DACA. We got your back, Latinos. Mm-hmm. Bro, Obama had 2008 to 2010 a supermajority. He didn't do crap. No, we did. have, like, here's the no, thing. No, he also deported more than Bush did. So he was a deporter in chief. So here's the thing. Like, we cannot just say it's Trump, right? Because what's worse, somebody who bullies you or somebody who tells you he's your friend and then doesn't have your back? Like, honest, like who's worse? A guy who says, you're a mojado, go back to your country? Or somebody says, oh, I love you. Right. And then they cheat on you. Mm-hmm. Like, I think both are bad. I, I see both as bad. I just see the Republican Party at, at right now particularly more dangerous than the Democratic Party uh, when it comes to governing. No, but here's the thing. They're both the Republicans are dangerous when it comes to rhetoric. Yes, we've had um, individuals who are chic who've been killed because of this rhetoric. Well, you there's, have, a, there's an uptick of right wing extremism. Extremism. Like, you had the ones that killing people. G- girl killed Heather, with, yeah. with, with, with the car, right? Here's my thing. We need to understand that we, the immigrant, we Latinos, we working class people don't have anybody in Austin. So if they are thumping their pulpit, they're doing that to raise money. They're doing that to win elections. But here's the thing. You have to also understand that the left is not doing anything either. Oh, they're fragmented. Because they're cowards. No, no, no. Here's the thing. We have, for example, um, how many Latino congressmen do we have? Chingos. We have the first Latina U.S. senator. The first Mexican-American Latina in the U.S. Senate. Her name is Catherine Cortez Mastos. I got her elected. When has she been here in solidarity with us? When have you heard her say something about like, no, like we need to, no, like this rhetoric is not okay. Like she's not backing us. It is more a Jewish guy who is 20 years post past retirement, which is Bernie Sanders. Like, yeah, um, who's out there. T- he's here in San Antonio. Yeah, yeah. With the Texas Agriculture Commissioner and Nina Turner. Mm -hmm. He's here. With our revolution. I was a Hillary supporter. And where's Hillary? Like, Oh, yeah, that's... Where's Hillary but selling her books, right? She's Uh, not on the ground. She's not community organizing at all. The only... Where's Obama, dude? Right? That was my idea. I thought... (laughs) I thought that Obama was going to go back into community organizing, right? Because no. that's the, that's a radical move to do as a as a former president. He's bourgeois. Here's now the he's thing. a bourgeoisie. Well, he's, he's always his, – his, his grandmother was the vice president of the biggest bank in Hawaii. Like, Obama used the race card. He, like, he said, okay, I'm black. No. Nah. The only black person there is Michelle Obama, dude. Like, like I'm sorry, but she's from the south side. She's from Chicago. Barack Obama is this guy whose mom was a – hippie a liberal she met a black guy he was exotic they had kids they had him um she went out there and went and did did her own life her grandparents were really rich raised him he went to private school brother he doesn't know what property was no no like 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 he went to pomona college here in california he went to um new york and he had this identity issues which black man which latino has identity issues we don't have identity issues. We know we're black and we're black. We know we're Mexicano, we're Mexicano. We know we're jodido, we're jodido. Obama ends up coming out out of left wing 
Um, and he was a good campaigner. R Ran Emanuel, David Axelrod. This is Robert Rage's biggest critique on Obama, right? That same muscle that got him elected, he failed to use to ensure that we pass the Affordable Health Care Act. And a lot of people are like, oh, people were, were really bad to Obama. People were really bad to JFK. They killed him. Um, people were really bad to LBJ. Well, what did LBJ do? Bro, he was a fist. Like, like, like he will go and do research on you and say, like, dude, you need to stop cheating on your wife or you're going to pass this bill. <laughs> That's politics. Obama was not a good politician. He got... He gave his two, he gave one of his biggest donating classes, which was the LGBTQ <clears throat> marriage. Awesome. But that was all he did. He did not what, do anything for the, the Supreme Court decision. Oh, he was, he, he did organize around that issue. He did make sure that, that, that marriage equality was something spoken on the national platform. But what did he do to protect the environment? Like we had the pipeline. He didn't do crap. Well, he tried, but it got reversed after he left. It was a lame duck session. But here's the thing. He wasn't there with the pipeline. He was, he did not, it was too easy for him even to push for criminal justice reform. Nada. It's Elizabeth Warren, Cory Brooker, right? But then Cory Brooker's taking money from Farber and Zodico Company. So the only two people that we have, we need to understand, if you look at the voting records, the only two people that we have in the Senate right now is um, Warren who is consistent. It is, it is Bernie Sanders. We took out Senator Pryor. That was another guy that was good in the Senate. We have Kamala Harris, who's good. But then where's the Texas delegation? Where are all these? Where's Nancy Pelosi? We, I don't know. I just see the Republican rhetoric is, this is due to the fact that Democrats cannot win an election, A, and B, there's no real Democrats there saying no, que onda? Everybody there se peina bien bonito, you know? Everybody has their, everybody combs their hair like their mom used to comb their hair in their first grade, right? I don't know, it looks all weird. But nobody's filling bustering, nobody's shutting down government. I want to see government shut down. Here's the thing that's how the Republicans gain power. I didn't get paid when they shut down when I was in Iraq. Like they literally did a filibuster, and when they do, the first ones affect their the military. But we need to be able to do something. I'm not saying radical, but we need to be able to say, hold power accountable. They're playing politics with us. And it's not about one party. It's, it's the worse the other one. Why, why is there that rhetoric in our media? Why are our journalists prostitutes selling themselves to the highest bidder? Like, where's the profession of journalism that's supposed to cover real news? That's supposed to say, no, that's not okay. Where the hell is Obama? Where the hell is Bill Clinton? Or he can't show himself now. Who cares? Here's the thing. When you, sign, when you join the army, you raise up your hand and you say you're going to defend the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. You know the other group of people that do that? Our presidents. That's the, same, that's the reason why I ran for office. Um, where's Hillary Clinton? Where is Julian Castro? Yeah. I'm his way. Like people are just like Julian Castro. This where the fuck is he? No, they I, hide. I I think they throw their names out there like uh, Kalamar. Uh, Ka uh, I don't know if I'm saying her name. Yeah, Kamala Harris. Ka uh, Kamala. There you go. Kamala Harris. Um, they throw her out. Uh, Cory Booker. They also throw out uh, Julian's name. And they're trying to see if it sticks. They're, they're seeing the base, how the base reacts. Uh, right now, they're... No, but that's the problem with the Democratic Party is that they pass the crown to somebody else, right? Like, but they pass a crown that's Martin certified O'Malley. for the establishment. Yeah. Here's the thing. Like, we need to be able to either, A, destroy the political party systems fully. Just say there's no more political parties. That's If you read George Washington's... For what I address. Mm-hmm. Or... Or we need to be able to say, look, Democratic Party, open, open, open the party up. Bro, you don't have to go that far. Amber Medina, our county chairwoman, right, and the Democratic Party decided to not tell anybody about her resignation. She resigned the day of the last day to be able to file. And their little boy, their little puppet, Jared Pokemon, or Jared yeah. Pokemon, or Pokemon, right? Jared. Pokemon. I'm going to be Trump. Pokemon. Jared Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon. If you're watching this, you're a Pokemon. 
um, go catch them all. He got he got the seat. And you know what he is? And we can talk about LNG. So the party literally passed the crown to Jared Pokemon, right? Jared Pokemon is the city manager of what city? Port Isabel. But an elevator pass house bill 40, which literally took away local governments, the ability to regulate the environment. And it was a pro LNG, pro big oil and gas. They're coming in here. And guess who Rene got into the Port Isabel city government? His boy, Gilberto Nojosa, who's making over $150,000 as the chairman of the Democratic Party. Now he's making another $150,000 as the city. And there, he made the law so vague that the Port Isabel, the city of Port Isabel can sue the state of Texas. And guess who's going to represent them? Pokemon, Gilberto Nojosa, and Oliveira. So they're like, people don't, A, I understand we're all busy, but look at what's happening. He gets $78,000 from these big corporations. He, a Democrat, pushes the biggest LNG pro-fracking bill, which was called the Denton Fracking Bill. Yeah, it was basically centralizing state authority when it came to the oil and gas industry. So you don't have a city like Denton passing a ban. And then when did we start hearing about fracking here? 2015, that was the biggest push, right? Right before the 2016 Port of Brownsville elections. Um, they get their boy, their elect. So look how snaky the Democrats are, right? Um, I'm a Democrat. I'm always going to be a Democrat. I don't align myself with the Republican party. Um, unless it's the Lincoln party and yeah. it's that, not there. It's not, those were happen. the radical Republicans of the past. Those were the radical Democrat. Like you need to understand that the party switched lines. Oh yeah, yeah. Like when people are like, Oh, who are the first ones who freed the um, African-Americans. It was the Republicans. It wasn't the Democrats. It's like, dude, you need to read history. Well, granted, uh, Lincoln also uh, established the Republican Party because before it was just the Whigs and the Democrats. And yeah. he was the third party that actually became the dominant second party. And, and then we, the Whigs dissolved. And then we had Teddy, our boy Teddy, with the progressives, like the real progressives. That's why we got a lot of Republican support in our campaign. Like people were like, dude, I don't argue. With, like, I don't agree with some of the things you say. But I like you, and I like your platform. Um, I don't know. I think that if people don't think that I'm saying the truth, have them look. Go and look for House Bill 40. Look at how much money Rene Oliveira sent. Look at the year that Gilberto Nojosa became the city manager. And look at the boy Pokemon. Why Democrats want to control their own little agenda, right? Um, the Republican Party is actually, I want you to call Morgan the chairwoman, right? She's going to answer her phone. And if people want to join the Republican Party, they can join it and they're a lot more open. I want you to try to find the number of Jared Pokemon. Can't find it. I want you to email him. He's not going to reply. So, yeah. I don't know. We have both. They're not good. We yeah. just need to understand that either a we reform those parties. Here's the thing: the convention starting. Yeah, which I'm. I'll be heading to as well. I'll be. There. We all have to. Like everybody, like tú, tú no, Fernando. Get some new delegates in there. Todos. Here's the thing: like if we don't control a party, I think we need to control both. I think yeah, both. Like if you're Republican or you're a slight Republican or you just say you know what, let me just join the Republican, then just do it because we need both parties packed. All right. Well, with, on that note, uh, we're going to switch over to discuss welfare. Stay tuned. song is called adventures by himichu available on spotify all right let's let's go into uh welfare in the valley in the united states uh i know uh, we're kind of running out of time so mm-hmm. hopefully this could be within the next 20 20 30 minutes or shorter but let's discuss with uh i see this uh racist dog whistle that became uh, pr- uh promulgated around the 80s uh mostly from the Republican circles about welfare queens. That term is very uh, offensive for a lot of people, and it has double meaning. 
And that's why it's called a dog whistle because the ones who are racist are like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, all, uh, are the people on welfare the problem that we face in our economy, in our community? When we speak about welfare, we need to understand that it's both to the top and to the bottom. <clears throat> we have corporate welfare and we have workers welfare. Like we have the safety net. Adam Smith, the founder of capitalism, said this, um, the best for capitalism historically, and I'm not going to quote Adam Smith. I'm speaking on my own. So capitalism is the only institution that works. You have communism that's failed. Um, and capitalism historically has taken more people out of poverty. However, when that beast is untamed and you're not able to create a safety net. Now, this is Adam Smith. If you're not able to create the safety net that allows people to bounce back, then you're going to destroy lives. And we saw that in the 1920s with FDR, um, the Dust Bowl, the banks closing, monopolies. Because people are naturally greedy. And you need to understand that capitalism, how it works, is is is... It's competitive, and it's a tick for tack, right? You do this, I do this, you do this, you do this, and it grabs with more intensity. And the more intensity it hits, it usually hits a bubble. That's why you have economic bubbles, right? Because if I find a way of making money, the housing market, that I can screw over people, I get more people involved, more people start then competing with each other, and the bubble then bursts, and the economy has to drop back to zero. Here's the issue. Do we bail out the banks? Is that welfare? Yes. Okay. When have we bailed out the middle class? Never. Right? Um, when have we bailed out the worker? Not, not that much. If you actually look at it, we give them little small stipends, which we call food stamps, which we call whatever. Without those stipends, our kids will not eat every Saturday and Sunday. Period. The only two meals that we'll have are the meals in our public school system. If we do not have housing, let's let's remove every Section 8 house here. How many people are we going to have in the streets? Right? Um, if we are not able to provide our kids and our single mother and our women, right, with um, health care, every kid here will be jodido. If you want a healthy democracy that's able to defend itself, join the military, that's able to work, then you need to be able to invest. Here's the thing. We're not investing. We're slashing since Reaganomics. Our families came here when there was an American dream, and in the name of privatization, we have made college, literally, has gone up 500% inflation, the same inflation rate that we have in our prisons. Watch. College tuition has gone up 500%, right? You have um, people um, in prison, right? And a 500%. So, and then we have the slashes of governmental programs that allow people to have an infrastructure of opportunity, right? And then you have a hyper-militarized um, police, a hyper-militarized uh, army, a hyper-militarized um, border patrol. And we're allocating our resources on guns instead of butter, right? Like instead of not yeah, even that. butter, bread, like, like people need bread. Here's my thing. Only 1% of all dollars used in governmental spending um, are actually abused. So there's no such thing as a welfare queen. If you actually look at a perspective, yes, do people abuse the system here and there? Yeah. It's so micro. It's so micro. But also we need to be able to fix our tax system. Because if you make $9.50, you will do a cost-benefit approach and say this. Why the hell am I going to work for $9.50, spend X number of dollars in gas, X number of dollars in healthcare, which I don't even have. But whenever I get sick, if I don't work, I can get all the benefits. Yeah. So we need to redefine our middle class first, A. Right? B, we need to make sure that we are providing every child the opportunity of success and then see we need to stop bailing out banks we need to stop giving the rich more money because the middle class is going to get destroyed and n right now you have so many people whose parents here's the thing here's the inverse of the equation 
we have middle class people now who are now becoming 1% who are becoming poor because they don't have health care. We have middle class whose kids are becoming addicts. Um, and instead of us moving forward, we're literally, it's everybody, for the exception of the top 5%, <laughs> is moving back, brother. So back to the, the question, though, <clears throat> do you think they're the problem? The problem is super PACs. The pa problem is corporate interest groups. The problem are our politicians, not the people. So the Okay. No. So no, it's not no, people no, no. like getting welfare. They're not the ones dragging out, uh, dragging our economy. No, the people who are dragging our economy are the people who are not able to balance a budget. And because X gives them a thousand dollars in a campaign contribution, they give Y million dollar tax cuts. Okay. Well, see, my my issue here is the economic system. Now, I'm a little bit different than you. I'm probably a little bit more left than you are. But at the same time, uh, my issue with the economic system. Of capitalism is that it requires an anti-state. It requires some form of a safety net. Um, so, so it could bust it, uh, bust it out whenever there's a market failure, and there's always going to be market failures. Um, that leads me to think that capitalism requires welfare in order to sustain itself. And when I see subsidies, deductions, and tax havens like to the oil industry, to the sugar industry, to the big agricultural industry, to companies basically trading on Wall Street, uh, for sure there is a welfare state. But for who? Yeah, we have a wealth. Historically, we had a welfare state for both, right? Um, then we had one for only the poor, which was FDR. He taxed the rich at 93%, straight up. And we saw the biggest economic boom ever. It was that boom that created the middle class, right? It was that boom that made sure that you were a worker and you were able to pay for a house Without, like, loans, bro. Like, like, if you had a high school degree back then, you had a skilled job, you provided for your family. And this was because of a tax. We had, literally, public television, public radio, the arts. We had the investment in science and technology that allowed us also to send the first person in the moon. And if you watch Netflix because you're unemployed, you probably think I'm lying. Right. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. Um, we need to be, now, we are only bailing out the rich and the privileged. El jodido is getting cacahuates. The middle class is just getting burdened. So we do have a welfare state, and that welfare state is really strongly more inclined to the 1%, and slightly, I don't even know why we still have one, but by the grace of God, we're still helping poor people out. Yeah. But it's, 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 it's not the same for, for me, see, welfare and capitalism, they have to be unionized. Well, not unionized. Not, 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 you, you need the free market, but you well, need a safety net. Exactly. But the reason being is because capitalism, when it was unregulated, when it didn't, it was, say, hypothetically, because capitalism is never pure, it's always mixed. Um, say, in a hypothetical situation, that like capitalism has no state. It's just capitalism. Private in, uh, private holders, private it's Mexico. Entity. It's Mexico. It's Mexico, right? Like You have private entities owning the means of production, and only private entities, no any public entities, no workers. Um, in that situation, it will collapse within itself. It, it can't withstand that type of uh, production because you're not going to have proper We're workers. We're just going to abuse people. Abuse people. Yeah. We ran into it uh, prior to FDR, prior to the... No, we the, have it in Texas. No, we have it here in Brownsville. Yeah. Like, this is capitalism with the only exception of zoning. Like, we're really good at zoning and planning. We can, but it's, it's ruthless capitalism. Like, nobody's protecting the worker yeah. when it comes to worker theft. Yeah, worker theft is a big issue right now. There's so much worker theft out there that goes unreported. And I'm kind of glad that our local reporters are actually covering that because it's actually a major issue. I actually experienced worker theft when I was teaching kids how to, yeah, teaching kids how to swim from a, a pool that was on Paredes. I go in there and basically I'm supposed to get paid every two weeks and I didn't get paid. And so I did a lot of labor I didn't get paid for. And so I, I experienced that and it happens a lot in capitalism. But the reason why I bring up uh, the capitalism and welfare and how they are required to be mm -hmm. in existence is because if they don't have that state that provides welfare, then it just collapses. Well, that's part of our constitution, right? To promote and protect for the general welfare of our citizenry. Like, like that's there. I like capitalism in the sense that it brings the best of us, and I think competition is good. However, 
we need to be able to take care of everybody. And I think that if we destroy, this is what Reagan did. They destroyed the infrastructure of opportunity in which that's the only thing that allows us poor people to actually move up. But also now we need to be able to not just think about the child and the senior, but think about the worker. Historically, welfare was only for babies and our seniors, right? But we haven't even taken care of our seniors. Like Social Security is about to bust and we don't fix it. And you know why? You know what demographic doesn't pay into Social Security? Like which income bracket? People making over 167000 Oh, they don't pay into the... No. If you, if you tax them, you fix the whole thing. Why? I don't know. I'm not a congressman. I'm not a U.S. senator, right? So that's one issue that we need to fix. Um, but also, what happens when... How do you control high medical costs? Is that through consumer protection? Or is that through Medicare or healthcare for all? Like, now I'm a student, and I'm asking you a question, right? Because when you, healthcare is so expensive that even if you provide healthcare for every single citizen, you're giving money to the poor, and then the poor is returning it to the greedy bastards, right? So you might not call that welfare, but it's literally like a two-step. Yeah. For me, when it comes to that type of system, for me, I'm anti-capitalist. So uh, I, I won't argue too much or debate too much about the virtues of capitalism because for me, I feel like the uplifting of poverty that we experience uh, after regulated capitalism, after FDR and all that, it's because China also got into the into the marketplace and they lifted up. Communist their, country their, became the biggest yeah. machine but that, in a capitalist. Yeah, but world. that's because uh, they're they're st- they have a strong state, right? And the state did those de- decisions. Same thing that our state does when it comes to the Great de- uh, Great Depression. Our state hasn't balanced the budget in forever. Like we don't have a state. We used to have a state with FDR. Well, for me, it's that... And re- Bill Clinton was the last one to balance the budget. Yeah, and that was a, a, a small surplus that Bush uh, exhausted with his uh, part Medi- Medicaid Part D prescription uh, program. But for me, there's a terminology, a specific terminology, which is state capitalism, which is synony- sim- uh, similar as uh, state socialism. And we, it goes into a historical background on the left. Uh, but basically, we consider... A capitalist system, or not we, but like I've been reading them, that they basically consider a capitalist system which is with the state as state uh, social state socialist or state ca- capitalist, depending on which angle you're looking at it. So if you're looking at China, state socialist. If you're looking at the United States, state capitalist. Mm-hmm. Now you apply, uh, you see the dynamics. Of like, well, their markets are, are owned by the uh, Chinese markets, are owned. Some industries are owned by the government, and they do trading with the U.S. They do trading with everyone. So that's state socialism, we, and they get bailed out when there's issues, or they switch. Uh, but also them. their workers are, Chinese workers are screwed. Well, they, uh, one Chinese example, workers are living in military concentration camps. If you look at the people who are doing our iPhones. Yeah. Oh, uh, They're living in barracks, brother. No, yeah. Like Dubai? I know. The Indians are living in, in, in barracks. Um, I, I understand their situation over there. I'm keeping it in the macro side in the mm-hmm. sense that they bail out their economy whenever it goes down that's a, of course. the same system that we do over here we have if we have the same situation that when the market fails we have to have the state bail out the ones who would are you agree with the bail out of the banks or would you be a, a true capitalist and say and you that's, know what no because a true capitalist yeah, a true capitalist is a mass uh, no, no, no 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 so in in here's my view right You're supposed to let it fall I'm a person that says you never cut the safety net. The safety net's the only glue that holds our society together. You never do it. And you add everything you can to ensure every child has quality education, that every child has health care, and every citizen has health care, and make sure that every single individual has a roof over their heads one way or the other, right? Um, here's my issue. Um... Why didn't we let, if we would have let the banks collapse, it would have allowed our society to heal. Because they were, here's the thing. Have you ever redrawn your money from Wells Fargo? Chingao is like minus 35, right? When you, like, 
Like Which is when, which is wrong that they're charging you for yes, not having money. Or they charge you a fee just to have your account with them. Yeah. Or they charge like so here's the thing. If we as a society are not able to be what I define, right, a true American capitalist, which just says protect the safety net always and forever, and that the big boys fucking literally suffer the same way we suffer. Here's the thing. If you go out to a bar and you spend three hundred bucks, no más a lo pendejo. But <laughs> you don't have then the next day to pay your rent. Are they going to kick you out of the house? Hell yeah. Are you going to learn your lesson? Hell yeah. Right? You're like, ching, why did I go to the bar and then spend 300 bucks? Will you ever do it again? Most likely no, right? Unless you're really stupid, right? Mm-hmm. This is the way we need to treat our banks. This is the way we need to treat the 1% because they're hoarding all the money and the money's not trickling down. Yeah. Well, just the allocation issues getting worse and worse and we're seeing that getting reflected in the inequality stats. So but also the consumer has no protection. Yeah, right now they don't, and they're trying to uh, take away the power that was constructed after the Great Recession. We don't. I, like, one of the things that I like about Mexico, despite everything is being screwed up there, is that they do have an organization that protects consumer and prices. Right? We, need, we don't have that here. Yeah, well, because everyone's taught with those... <laughs> capitalist ideas that if you control prices you're centralizing decision making um but here's the oh, you have to be able to i'm not saying about control prices is 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 saying why is the pen for um what's it called um contienes azúcar diabetes right oh yeah that has gone up by 700 percent. they just put that kid to jail yeah yeah for right her. For security fraud. Yeah. Well, for security fraud. But here's the thing. Consumers need to be... Capitalism works if there is checks, if there's a safety net, and there's protection. Um, when the workers are not protected, they cannot bargain for their wages. Like here you have CEOs making 1,200 times more than the average worker, like 690 in Las Vegas. Yeah. In Texas, the average CEO is making 461% more than the average... Like, I can understand you have all these degrees, but inflation goes up 5%. In 10 years, your dollar is worth 50 cents. And wages have not gone up in the same rate as the prices. And who who is that agency that should protect the people? Yeah, I, I agree. There should be an agent. And that's the, thing, that's the thing about state capitalism is that you have to create those agencies because they're the band-aids for capitalism. And my main macro critique of it is that we're just adding too many band-aids. We're not revolutionizing the whole system. We're not going to the root issues of things. And so for me, that's the radicalism. And I would like to exercise or practice and try to pass policies or get people in office or ha- inspire people to realize that the economic system that we're currently in, currently in sucks. it's not, it's, it's we're, not working for all of us. Yeah, it's not working for all of us, but we're witnessing this stagnation or this, uh, because we're seeing good numbers coming out from the economy, especially with the tax rates and all that. But deep down, the people are not feeling it. And you have Bill Gates and a poll showing that the people are feeling that maybe next year or another, there's going to be another recession. And no matter how much the data is showing us coming out that the here's the thing the like, we don't w- even have politicians who don't have our back like you have citizens united right like we need to be able to take away money out of politics like that's the first band-aid right well see are we adding band-aids or no. are we like going a deep dive no 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 here's the thing this? no like you here's the th- i don't believe in like revolution i'm not a french revolutionist i'm not i don't believe in 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 killing people um I believe in intellectual discourse and truly changing things by analyzing an item, right? You take away, you want to be a true revolutionist, I ask people, you take away money out of politics. Once you do that, you need to make sure that then the other check is this. You can do whatever you want in revolution. If the people are not having skin in the game, nothing's ever going to work. If you were able to say you can only spend for a house raise, this is why we kept ourselves at 60,000. Let's say we say to every Texan, uh, if you want to run for office, you can only spend 60000 And the state will give you the money. If you want to spend anything else more than that, right? it has to be in donations less than $50. Ah, cabrón. Yeah. Now you have to work for the money, right? Now you have to go knock on doors. Oh, you know what? Also, there's no yard signs. 
And you know what? Every candidate needs to have a website with their platform. And there needs to be three forums and debates organized by the citizenry. Here's the thing. The people need to be able to do the work for us to be able to create a revolutionary society in which all people are created equal. Here's the thing. We have too many. Here's the thing. We have minority people like me and you, right, Um, who think and contemplate about ideas so truly affect change. And they become thesis and they become theories. And the only real muscle that you have, Patrick, that I have, that anybody has, is the people who back them. Like one of our campaign's slogans was, I'm only as strong as the people and who I represent. If we're not able to create the true checks and balances, there's already an organization that, that follows the money. It's called followthemoney.org. When we posted the numbers of Rene spending $68,000 in beer and food, nobody gave a fuck. But you know what? We posted a picture of tacos with the data. <laughs> Ching out, we got 1,000 likes. We posted facts of the poverty ratio, 73.9% downtown. Nada, way. Nada, nada, nada. You post a picture of a girl in a bikini, ching, ching, ching. So we need to, our people have been conditioned because of capitalism, sex, and um, radicalness sells. The person who says the dumbest thing gets the most likes, right? The person who looks the sexiest gets the most likes. And our people are a product of that media that's been feeding them violence sex, right, um, and, and stupidity. We need to be able to change that. This is what Thomas Paine did with common sense. You know James Madison? He wrote a newspaper. He changed the whole society with the Federalist Papers, right? Like nobody knew who he was, and he would just throw media. We need to be able to educate the people, A, B, provide the safety net, and see, send corrupt politicians to jail. Like, there's no reason why there was $13 million embezzlement case that caused the death of Marchand, that jumped off the South Padre Island Bridge, and then his daughter, Devon Marchand. And then Oliveira just gets slapped in the wrist, right? And this is the FBI. Eddie Trevino, right? The guy who said, oh, yeah, I voted no, and I'm really cool because I'm not that cool with the LNG, right? And wait, he was... Literally on the phone, saying, oh, they caught us with our pants down. With freaking este, um, Rene, Gilberto Nojosa, the one most likely to snitch, became the chairman of the Democratic Party. Where the people know this, because it was in the news, but either A, we forget, or B, we just don't care. And here's the thing. When people tell me, are you sad? I cannot force change on anybody. And until we realize that it's people that have to be able to do these changes, these radical changes, right? We are not going to have... Here's the issue with Mexico. Mexico has term limits. <laughs> Mexico has taken away the money out of politics. Is Mexico still corrupt? Yes. Why? Because the political party system has said, <laughs> okay, if we know that every six years a congressman is going to be retired... Then the political party does what? Substitutes the next person. Yeah. They have a line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm asking you is, is we need to be able to invest in more outlets like yours. We need to be able to have more conversations at a larger platform. We need to be able to have a radio station. Trust me. We need to be able to have a social media platform on the Tenemos estas conversaciones en inglés y en español, mm-hmm. right? And we need to be able to, every single election, all of us who are in the progressive flank, in the left flank, right? You'd be surprised, man. There's a lot of Republicans that agree with the things we're saying. Oh, no. I have friends <laughs> who, like, they're libertarians and they agree with certain things. Like, I had a, a libertarian friend saying that, like, Bernie Sanders was, he would choose Bernie Sanders over We need what to we be have. able to every single election commit. Here's the thing. We would have won. I told people we need 300 of you guys to turn out 13. What's 30 times 13? 3,900. How many votes did Rene get? 3,400. We got 1,527. Right? If we would have turned out 3,000... Dude, 
It's just 300 people, man, at 13. Yeah. And so we're able to do that, right, and say it is up to you. But we, we will provide you all the resources. Here's the thing. How much would it cost you to have cheers at a bandwidth of 10,000 people? That's, that's a lot. It's gonna. No, it's probably gonna cost you between a thousand dollars. Here's the thing: we spent five thousand. We have three thousand followers, right? Um. So it costs you what, like two dollars per individual? It looks like that when I was seeing it when I was setting it up. So let's look at a. We need to raise the money. B. We need to be able to build this infrastructure, not just for the podcast, right? But also educate people on how to get a podcast, right? So there needs to be a whole educational aspect. We need to promote this event Um, and we need to all pitch in our resources. Once we start doing those things, I strongly believe that slowly we're going to start affecting change. Um, And our city is the laboratory of democracy. Why are we thinking about Trump and state when it is our elected officials who say black people don't matter? Yes or no? Like we had one that said X black person is x thing uh, one of our local leaders Mm -hmm. oh yes uh the commissioner is he still in office yeah he he tried to he submitted his paper to resign but then he resented it it's an all act it was all show Uh, oh no i know i got you guys by the bait um we have a person who stole how much two million dollars or how much in fajitas oh yeah so millions of dollars in fajitas in fajitas we know (laughs) mames yeah i don't know the specifics it's 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 right here Right? It all starts with our city government. That concludes our conversation uh, with Arturo. Thank you, Arturo, for taking the time to, Love you, brother. Thank to you. come into the studio to discuss these important topics uh, about our community uh, with me. And uh, I wish you good luck uh, with your future endeavors and I uh, hope to see you back in the show. Thank you. And that does it for this bonus episode of the Cheers Podcast. If you're not a patron of the show, become one and support the show by making a pledge. Until next time, I'm Patrick Everett.